Welcome to the Interaxis channel and Interaxis.io. Today we're going to talk a little bit about companies that are holding Bitcoin as part of their corporate treasury. And of course this is a very hot topic. Uh, first we want to remind you please subscribe to the channel here if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, check out our website Interaxis.io. Check us out on Twitter at Interaxis8. Now we're going to move forward. Bitcoin is a corporate treasury. This is hot. It started really over the summer. Uh, of 2020 when Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy announced they were going to put several hundred million dollars of their corporate treasury into Bitcoin. And the reason they said was they had all this cash sitting around and they're worried about inflation. They're worried about a store of value. They, they have this risk of inflation later on, uh, which essentially means this. If they have, we'll call it a hundred million dollars sitting in the bank and they know that years in you know a year or two years in the future they're going to have to pay for let's say people right they're, they're gonna have to pay for services or pay for people or hire people and they think that because of all this money these dollars that are being printed naturally people are going to have to feel like they earn more money so their cost of people might go up their cost of, of the you know micro strategies a, a uh, an IT company. So their cost of computer equipment, right? Supplies, shipping, because they, they have to buy their equipment elsewhere for, for whatever services they offer. All that might go up in price, which means that's more money out of the bank and they might, might or might not be able to charge. They might have uh, long-term contracts with some of their clients or some of their clients might not want to uh, pay them more in the future. So what they said is we have all this cash. Okay, there's more dollars being created. We think inflation is going to be there. So we're going to take this flat, this cash, and we're going to convert it to Bitcoin. Why? Because as we all know, there's a limited supply of Bitcoin. So if there's inflation and, all, and, the, and the price of all these things goes up, the price of Bitcoin should go up. So come a year or two from now, when they have to pay for all these things and the price has gone up, they go back into dollars to pay for these things, and instead of having a hundred million, maybe the thought was we'll have, you know, 150 million dollars to be able to pay for all this because maybe this has gone up in value. Now, of course, since they started this, uh, the price of Bitcoin has probably gone up three or four x. And now it has become uh, something where Tesla has announced that they put one and a half billion dollars. MicroStrategy has added another, you know, 1.2 billion dollars in Bitcoin purchases uh, in, in the last several months. And um, uh, last week, MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor had a conference where they had 8,200 corporate CFOs, treasurers, CPAs, and such come learn from them as to why and how to add Bitcoin to their corporate treasury. This is extremely important. So if you are a financial advisor with clients with small businesses, if you are, if you run or own a small business, and it doesn't have to be small, if you own or run a business, a family business, manufacturing, where is this going to be impacted and how does it impact you as an advisor or as an investor? This is really important because what you might see is, is there are so many companies, of course, that have to look out in the future and have to hedge for something like this. They have to hedge for inflation because it's not just about putting dollars into Bitcoin in your corporate treasury and hoping that the price of Bitcoin goes up from wherever it is now, you know, $38,000, $40,000 all the way up to, you know, $150,000 and you make a, this huge windfall. It's about hedging and understanding the risks that you might have, right? Because let, let's say you're in the food prep business or the food service business or you make some sort of food product and you have to look out in the future and may, maybe your product involves uh, corn or maybe it, it, it involves soybeans or, or something like that. Now you might be able to buy corn futures or soybean futures and keep your, your outlay of money pretty steady from now till the future. Okay, but you can only go out so far and keep your your outlay or your expenses steady for some of these uh, ingredients that, that go in your food. Of course, you you know you also have oil because you have to pay somewhat for transportation, and it might not be you that that provides the gas or the, or the the cars or the trucks for the transportation, but you might be paying someone else, and their prices might go up, and you have to somehow hedge against that. So you, you buy oil futures to make sure that that you're hedging against that sort of you know delivery risk, those kinds of things. What about currency risk? 
Right. What about the fact that you might be buying some products from other countries and you have to hedge against currency risk? You have all these other risks that you have to hedge against, uh, against the price potentially going up, and there's really only so much you can do. So as a, as a corporate treasurer, if you have Bitcoin or if you have dollars sitting on your books, why not take some of it? And again, we're not giving you advice, but we're saying this is just thought. This is just something you need to probably look at and think about. But why not convert some of it to Bitcoin? Because if all of these prices go up in the future because of inflation, because there's so many dollars being printed, because there's so much more fiat currency and you're going to find inflation, the price, the, the value, the number of Bitcoin that there are in the world will only ever be 21 million. There are over 18 and a half million already created. We know where they all are. We know they're being bought up faster than they can be created every single day. So if these are all going to go up because of inflation, the theory is Bitcoin should go up because of inflation. So if you want to protect your buying power for these things, not just go you know, from, from $40,000 to $100,000 Bitcoin, but if you just want to protect your buying power, then maybe going, going from cash and holding Bitcoin is a way to do that so that you don't have to deal with corn futures and soy futures and oil futures and currency risk and currency futures and hedging all that. You can go, look, I can take care of it all with owning a, an asset that will probably go up in value if all those other things go up in value. Now you also you take into account here some level of technology risk. And this is now I have all new things to learn. I got to learn about how Bitcoin works and I got to learn about wallets and keep it safe and secure and make sure that I understand how that works. But now I, I've introduced a little bit of technology risk, but is that okay to say, how much does it cost me to, to hedge all these other risks that I might have, to hedge against inflation in every other part of my business? And I can do so with Bitcoin. Now, in the past, people actually hedged against, especially from other countries, hedged against inflation by owning dollars. But dollars now are the things that are, that are being the most printed and it's what most likely will cause more inflation. So now I can hedge that in the past with gold. Well, gold isn't all that easy to utilize to hedge inflation. It's not that easy to store. It's not that easy to buy. Uh, you could buy you know, gold funds or gold ETFs or, or what have you to try to hedge. But Bitcoin is something that's pretty easy to, to store. Again, you take some of the technology risks there, and we're not telling anyone to do this, but this is what corporate treasurers are looking at. And this was the point of this 8,200 people that showed up uh, on a webinar to watch what MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor are doing and got the blueprint. And another 250,000 people that have watched some of those videos after the fact to learn about it. So this wave is coming of, of public corporations and then private companies uh, buying Bitcoin to store on, on their corporate balance sheets. Now, how does it affect you as an advisor? How does it affect you as an investor? Well, if you're an advisor, you might have clients that uh, that are that have this this kind of business, and they might be asking, "Can we do that?" And the answer is absolutely, they can, because it's so it, it's relatively easy. It's not something that is only the realm of the mega rich or mega wealthy or monster public corporations. This is something that anybody can do, provided they have the understanding and the technical ability to be able to buy and hold Bitcoin or buy and hold cryptocurrency and digital assets. So as an advisor, this is something you can help a client with if they, if they have a small business. Okay, so maybe your clients Maybe this doesn't make sense for them. Maybe they, they operate month to month and there's no cash around to do this. Okay, but, but maybe they make a good income and they have some savings. So what does this mean for the price of Bitcoin? Well, if you have over 8,200 corporations looking at how they can add Bitcoin to their balance sheet and look at how much money is sitting around in cash and has been sitting in cash on the balance sheet of public corporations for quite a while. There's all this cash sitting there and in the past they bought their own stock back quite often. They might not be doing that now because stocks have run up so this is what they might be doing. So what does this mean? Again, 21 million Bitcoin ever created. If you, if you have clients and you're wondering, is there a reason why the price of Bitcoin might go up? Do we think it might go down? Look at this. 8,200 corporations are, are seriously considering doing what MicroStrategy and Tesla have already done. There are only 21 million Bitcoin. This is potentially a reason. Again, we're not giving advice. We're not pumping Bitcoin, anything like that. We're helping you understand as advisors how you might look at 
Bitcoin for your clients. If you're an investor and you're going, man, this has really run up. I don't know if it can keep going. Is it, is it just going to stop? Again, we're not telling you it's going to go up. We don't even know. But here are some arguments and here are some reasons to look at the events of the past week uh, of, of MicroStrategy's event of Tesla saying they bought Bitcoin. Now other companies are going, well, if those guys could do it, that gives us the ability to start talking about it. It, gives, it, it, it means that um, shareholders are going to start asking the board of directors, why are we not holding Bitcoin on the books? Why are we holding all this cash that is devaluing? There's going to be inflation. Why aren't we holding at least some Bitcoin? And if they all go try to buy it and there's a limited supply, then ideally the price should probably go up. So if you're an investor and you're looking at that, you, you should be thinking to yourself, is this something I want to get into? Is there room for the price to go up? And what we're saying is there's probably room because there is increased demand, demand going up, limited supply, that leads to potentially a price increase. So how does this impact you as an advisor, as an investor? If you're an advisor and you have clients that are in the business space, you can have this conversation with them because this is something they can do. If you're an investor or you're an advisor that has clients who are investors who are not small business, look at this and go, is this a reason why we think Bitcoin can continue to go up in value? This is a conversation that you can have with clients. Again, so many more corporations will probably start holding something like Bitcoin on their books because it's a store of value, because it's an inflation hedge. They have to hedge their future risks of inflation. And there's a limited supply. That means probably the price will go up. This is an easy way for companies to potentially hedge some of that inflation risk. And it's relatively easy for those corporations to go buy Bitcoin. And they got the, the entire blueprint last week from MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor. So now they might start going and doing that. So we hope you enjoyed this video. We hope you'll see more. We hope you'll subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at Interaxis8. If you're a financial advisor, check out our course, certifieddigital.org. Uh, and we hope to see you in the next video.